So viewers, I would like to discuss about clinical trial today because clinical trial is one of the most important topic as per my understanding and this topic is absolutely relevant with the subject that is pharmacology and this topic is it's absolutely important for those students who are actually looking for a job in different sectors like pharmacovigilance, like data analyst, like clinical trial. So they must understand the insights of clinical trial, specifically the phases of clinical trial. So let's discuss this topic. First of all, you must understand that clinical trial is a process of drug discovery. And these clinical trials are nothing but the final phases of a drug discovery process. In case of drug discovery, we all know that uh, the normal span of drug discovery, it will take around 13 to 14 years. And moreover, uh, the investment for uh, the entire process is huge. That is around uh, 400 to 500 crore Indian rupee. So these huge investments and uh, the entire stake uh, depends on the final processing of that particular molecule. And the final processing is nothing but uh, clinical trial. So we cannot go for clinical trial directly. First of all, several phases are there. And one of the most important phase is animal study. First of all, you have to uh, go through this animal study and after animal study, if those results are satisfactory, if those results are promising, then only uh, the regulatory authority uh, will ask permission uh, from WHO and uh, for, the, for a particular license that is nothing but the investigational new drug license. At that investigational new drug license is uh, necessary. Uh, for uh, to study those uh, molecules uh, on humans because you know if those uh, data which are actually coming from the animal studies are not promising and if uh, if WHO allows uh, that particular molecule to study on humans in that case that may create uh, a severe problem and that and that in that case we may lose uh, uh, the human lives and that is not at all expected. So this concept is absolutely necessary that after animal study, those uh, those data which are actually coming from animal studies are basically sent to the WHO by the competent authority and WHO will verify those data and then only they will issue the IND. So when we are talking about IND, there is another concept that is INDA, that is Investigational New Drug Application. And this is IND, that is Investigational New Drug. So both concept is different. So today I'd like to discuss only about the Investigational New Drug, that is a neuron molecule or, no, or a novel molecule. Now, uh, the clinical trial, uh, what are the requirements uh, apart from that? So first of all, uh, for to conduct a clinical trial, whatever the molecule is, we must convert it into a formulation part. The formulation can be like a uh, doses form, like uh, that can be a tablet or capsule or liquid doses form, can, that can be aerosol and several other formulations are also there. So first of all, we have to convert that uh, API or that investigational drug into formulations, then only we can inject those uh, formulations. And in case of clinical trial, uh, several uh, factors or several departments or several things are there like the design designing of a clinical trial this is also absolutely necessary and absolutely important and along with the ethical part because you cannot go for a clinical trial for uh, for on random basis so there is some ethics and you must uh, you must follow and you must maintain those ethics and how you are conducting the clinical trial that is also equally important and there is a monitoring authority. A uh, few persons are responsible to monitor the entire process. Audit should be there because you know the clinical trial process is also a long term process. Uh, several days or several months are taken uh, for this clinical trial. So, audit should be there. And record keeping that is one of the most important things uh, nowadays because uh, at any point of time, you may you have to retrieve those uh, data uh, and you must keep those data and preserve those data in a prescribed format. Data analysis part is there. Data analysis absolutely necessary and statistics are being used for data analysis part and also the report generation and that is also there. So several aspects are there. To control all those things, uh, we need the good clinical practice guideline. So basically this good clinical practice guideline is nothing but the GCP guideline, which is basically amended by ICH or implemented by ICH, that is International Conference on Harmonizations. So according to that guideline, the principal investigator or the PI must design uh, the inter uh, clinical trial. They must maintain the ethical part. 
they must conduct according to that particular guideline and also the competent authority must monitor in that way and audit should be there record keeping data analysis and report generations are all as per the guideline of that gcp that is a good clinical practices and uh, in every country there is a regulatory authority there is a competent authority just like in our country in india we are having icmr they have their own guidelines and those guidelines must comply uh, the guidelines which is given by the world uh, medical association as per the helsinki declaration because world medical associations they have generated one guideline that how uh, to conduct the clinical trial and whatever the competent authority of every nations are irrespective of that they must uh, uh, comply their own guidelines with the mother guidelines that is the main guideline as per the health and declaration so that concept is absolutely necessary so several competent authorities are related with the clinical trial all of you must understand this thing now uh, another thing is that as per the drugs and cosmetics act uh, this clinical trial comes under the schedule why this is one of the most important uh, information and we must uh, uh, we must uh, keep in keep this information uh, in our mind uh, that this clinical trial or clinical trial basically comes under the schedule why now talking about the phases so Clinical trial basically it's having four phases, phase one, phase two, phase three and phase four. Also there is a phase zero. Uh, in other video I'll discuss about that particular phase that is not a mandatory phase, that is an optional phase. So in this video I'd like to discuss only the phase one, phase two, phase three and phase four. Now considering the phase one, uh, this is nothing but a no blinding study. So what do you mean by no blinding study? or what, what is the meaning of blinding study blinding study means uh, that you know that in case of clinical trial patients are there doctors are there the investigators are there qualified uh, pharmacologists are there patients are there so in case of phase one uh, clinical trial uh, the all the volunteers uh, they can be the patients they can be the healthy volunteers they are informed about that particular molecule what is the purpose of that molecule and how those molecules will work as per their academic qualification or as per their understanding level all the physicians all the patients all the volunteers they will get all the informations so everything is open for them that means in terms of informations informations are not hidden from them so that is why this phase one is known as the uh, no blinding study now the questions are considered in the phase one uh, clinical trial who will conduct the trial only two persons can conduct the trial one is qualified clinical pharmacologist and trained physicians apart from that other supporting healthcare professionals they can also support they can also work with them but qualified clinical pharmacologist or the trained physicians are only allowed uh, to get in touch or in direct contact with the patients okay other healthcare professionals are also there uh, they will be the supporting staffs but they are not allowed uh, to uh, to be in touch directly with the patients okay they can only give the support they can uh, they can do their 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 own part now uh, the thing is that uh, the purpose of the phase one clinical trial uh, as i have already mentioned that uh, in case of clinical trial we are having four phases phase one phase two phase three and phase four so the purpose of phase one is to estimate the safety and tolerability uh, of that drug or the formulations actually and to estimate the pharmacological parameters their effects on the vital functions like their heart rate like blood pressure the kidney liver and brain functions uh, monitoring basically the battery tests are, are performed whether uh, those uh, formulations are working or not so Considering the phase one clinical trial, the main objective and the main purpose is to estimate the safety of that drug. Whether that patient uh, can receive those drugs, because if it is not safe, then there is no utility of its uh, efficacy. So that is why safety is the first thing what they are looking for actually. The patient is initiated, then uh, will then will consider the tolerability of the drug and pharmacological parameters are also being measured during the process and during the entire process the vital functions like kidney liver brain functions battery tips are uh, considered and they are monitored 
And if uh, the drug uh, comes out with positive results, good results, then only uh, the principal investigator will go for the phase two clinical trial. Now the subject, that means the volunteers. So how many numbers of volunteers uh, can be incorporated in phase one clinical trial? That is nothing but 20 to 80 healthy or volunteer or the patients the principal investigator can consider and for that purpose all the volunteers or patient must give the informed consent form duly signed and then only the principal investigator will conduct the clinical trial and the number of heads is fixed that should be within 20 to 80 and another important aspects of phase one clinical trial is that the dosing schedule uh, whatever uh, the therapeutic dose is or whatever the expected therapeutic dose is this particular trial always starts with a very low dose to higher dose because if uh, in a step by step manner because if initial uh, in case of initial low dose if those volunteers are showing some abnormal outcomes then immediately we can stop the process in that way we can save the human life because our main objective may be uh, to discover a new molecule, but not at the cost of human life. So this point is absolutely important point uh, for the phase one clinical trial. Now talking about the phase two. So again, the question is who will conduct the trial? Uh, the answer is same that qualified clinical pharmacologist and transitions are uh, only you can perform the clinical trial other supporting health care staffs are also there but they are not allowed uh, to get in touch with the patient directly because the responsibility actually goes to the qualified clinical pharmacologists and trained physicians for the entire investigation now the number of subjects considering the subjects just like uh, on the phase one clinical trial there is a quantitative difference with phase one with phase two in case of phase two clinical trial, at least 100 to 500 patients are considered for phase two clinical trial. And the main purpose of this phase two is to estimate the efficacy, to identify the dose range, to identify the tolerability of the formulations, and also the investigator will estimate the pharmacokinetic parameters of that particular trial. And this is basically uh, in case of phase two, Blinding studies are also there and open studies are also there. Blinding study means in here sometimes few patients they don't know what they are actually uh, consuming in terms of uh, their molecule. They don't know what is the mechanism of action or, or what purpose they are actually taking those uh, medicines. This is known as blinding studies. Sometimes blindings are single blinding study where the patients they don't know what, what exactly they are consuming. Uh, in case of double blinding study, even uh, the physicians, they also don't know what is the exact uh, outcome of that investigational drug. And also the patients don't know the uh, exact uh, outcome of the drug or the mechanism of the drug. So after performing that study, uh, randomized on a randomized manner, all the data are being collected and they are, same, uh, they are basically processed in two different centers. And after that, all those data are uh, being uh, compared and then only those data are processed. Now the centers are considering the phase two clinical trial. It's, it's a monthly centric trial, at least two to four centers are there where uh, that number of patients that is 100 to 500 patients, they will undergo this phase two clinical trial. Now coming to the phase three part, uh, in here also the qualified uh, clinical pharmacologist or trained physicians are responsible to conduct this clinical trial and this is a, a this is a bigger concept of phase two clinical trial because in here uh, we have uh, they must go for 500 to 3000 patient and this is a multicentric trial definitely and the main purpose of this trial is to identify whether the safety of the drug tolerability of the drug pharmacokinetic parameters and value of drug that is the dose actually and the importance of the drug and the potency of the drug all those parameters are being measured with that 3000 uh, population and then if those uh, data are showing positive results uh, then uh, new drug applications are being uh, issued 
and who that is world health organization will give uh, the permission for marketing uh, for, for those drugs in particular area or in different areas and this is is absolutely important because in here uh, we are exposing the drug to thousands of uh, patients that is up to three thousands of the patients and we'll observe uh, their safety their tolerability will observe their uh, doses will measure their doses and pharmacokinetic parameters are also uh, being observed during the entire process now the phase uh, four clinical trial so in case of phase four clinical trial after successful completion of phase three clinical trial where the drug molecular death formulation are exposed uh, or applied on maximum 3000 number of uh, volunteers and when those volunteers are showing positive promising results in that case we can go for the phase 4 clinical trial so phase 4 clinical trial is also known as post marketing surveillance because in case of phase 4 clinical trial those drugs are distributed in different areas where selective physicians are instructed to use those drugs and all those physicians always uh, keep a data that to whom they are prescribing those drugs and specialized professionals are there in the market they will collect those data on a regular basis and those drugs are basically the primary data what they're collecting from the market from the physicians from the healthcare professionals from the pharmacist and when those drugs are being used randomly by the physicians in case of phase one phase two phase three when those drug molecules are used on those uh, patients or the healthy volunteers this is a control process but when those drugs are uh, free to go in the market that means those drugs in most of the cases they are showing some unexpected outcome so all those things are basically monitored by specialized people they will collect those data like drug drug interactions data drug food interactions data they will collect uh, other interactions some adverse drug reactions data and they will process those data just send it uh, to the competent authorities those competent authorities will, will collect those data and they will uh, process the data analyze those data and send it to the who or the fda or any other competent authority so that they can take care uh, of that particular thing so they can they can conclude uh, what is the exact outcome of those drugs and accordingly they will take the action so phase four clinical trial or post marketing surveillance it's a continuous process it's because we know that as per our uh, genetic characteristics on on day to day basis our genetic characteristics are can be uh, mutated or uh, other other things are also there several environmental factors are coming every day we are facing new diseases so several situations or pathological situations are there so when uh, we are talking about the post marketing surveillance it's a continuous process and on continuous basis we just collect those data and those data are primary data we are sending those data to the competent authorities and they will analyze those data and they will take uh, 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 exact actions what is what is need to be taken uh, considering those data so from this uh, slide or entire video i think uh, all the viewers uh, you can understand uh, at least the basics of clinical trial and i'm sure that this uh, video will be absolutely helpful for your understanding that is a basic understanding about the clinical trial so thank you for observing this slide